Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Hema. Uh, first name is Hemalata, surname is uh, Velapan. Uh, I use she, her pronouns. I am uh, right now in Seattle. I'm originally from India, but uh, doing my PhD pre-masters right now in University of Washington, Seattle. So my uh, field of interest is, uh, so my school is environmental and forest sciences. So I'm still uh, trying to find my research question, but my general uh, field of interest is in uh, deforestation and uh, finding how uh, like forestry trade uh, has a uh, role in the deforestation. So that's what I'm going for for my PhD research. So, so one of the, uh, uh, kind of like a chapter or question for my PhD research is to uh, find like kind of identified or distinguish between plantation forest and uh, uh, natural forest because uh, with, when it when it comes to trade like forest products trade uh, the products that is coming from or the trees that, that is coming from plantations versus natural forest has like a major role. So most of the cases, the plantation tree species are legal forest product products and the protected uh, areas from uh, the products that's coming from the protected areas are illegal. So that's one of my objective to use satellite remote sensing and geocomputation to distinguish uh, these two land types and also potentially identify the species that's growing there. So I uh, took like a, small part of it and uh, try to use uh, like deep learning for this particular project. Uh, yeah, and I'm brand new for deep learning. So I had a lot of challenges. So you're not going to see a lot of fancy graphs or anything, but you will, you know, listen to what are the challenges uh, that I've gone through. So probably you can learn something from that as well. So first uh, for this project, uh, I have a, a like a, a training data set. So I that is basically a polygon uh, data set uh, and each polygon represents a plantation and it has uh, metadata information like species and other things. So what I did is like, I did like a pre-processing and had different classifications. So there were like 10 different species uh, uh, which I used for the classification. So. Yeah, I started off like importing all the required packages. And yeah, this is the location where I have all, everything. And so my idea is to have this polygon that data set and have a, um, you know, a, a satellite image. So in this case, I used Sentinel and then collect all the band spectral informations and have each spectral information as a column. Uh, and all these would go uh, into the neural network as, as predictors. So yeah, I downloaded the Sentinel map and I did a, a zonal statistics of the polygon shape file and Sentinel uh, satellite image using this function called PK extract OGR. So I used all the points of the pixel and did mean and uh, standard deviation. And I put all that information into a CSV file. So this is basically how the CSV file look. So all these informations are already present for the polygon. And uh, yeah. And there would be extra, so it's not visible here, but there will also be uh, uh, the band information. So there would be extra 13 bands that comes from the Sentinel images. And yeah. And then what I did is like, so there are different species. So there's a species column and there are different species. So I basically uh, combined uh, most of the species. Uh, so I had like top five species, which are single species. And there are like combination of species, like mixed species. So I had different categories, like uh, manual categories. So there were 10 different categories. And since this is a classification exercise, so initially I didn't know. Initially I had a column where it says 10 different species, but for using classification, uh, we are not supposed to send in like, you know, categorical information. So I, I made all these into different column names and then had zeros and ones or zeros and twos for each classification rows. So yeah, I picked 
the necessary uh, predictors. So I had 14 predictors, which includes the band, uh, uh, each band information and the XY coordinates and also the species uh, uh, categories. So this is how it looks. So I had like 10 different categories and each, if, if it's present, it, it would either have one, two, and other numbers and the rest would be zero. So I converted this into a numpy and then I did the training and testing split of 30%. So uh, the difference uh, between like a linear regression and this one is here like, so yeah, I, I had like 24 total uh, inputs, which includes the 10 classification categories and the output would be the, uh, would equal to the number of classification categories that I have. So in this case, it would be from 15 to 24. So I did everything. And uh, this is the uh, X train and test sizes. And I did the in uh, feed forward module. And uh, yeah, I had like a lot of challenges here. Uh, initially, uh, I had like just one uh, input here. Uh, I mean, the size would be like just one and there was a lot of like dimensional mismatch challenges. So I, I kind of learned the hard way that it has to be different columns for each classification. And then when I this changed to 10, it kind of matched and it, it worked. So this is basically uh, from the JEDI data set that uh, work that we did. So I used the same similar kind of model. I tried ReLU, Sigmoid, and TanH for everything uh, because I don't know that much like what kind of model will be useful for the uh, classification purposes. So I went with this and I did the similar kind of training. One of the things that was still challenging is like this hidden dimensional range. I don't know uh, if, if this is like, you know, these numbers that we have used for a linear model is like appropriate for a classification model, or if we need like a different kind of set of numbers for these ones. So that's still a challenge for me. So yeah, I learned all that, but I didn't get like my R values were not Great. It, it was mostly equal to zero and, and it took a lot of time to run this. I, I guess I started this last night and it was running the whole night. I don't know if, if that has to do with like, you know, separating the batches and or if the file size is bigger. So yeah, uh, yeah, right now I'm, I'm like, yeah, not successful with this model. Like the R value is, is just going around zero. So probably I'll, what I'll do is like, you know, change some of this. So I used SGD, stochastic gradient descent. Probably I'll change that to some other uh, uh, module and then change play with some of the activation functions to arrive at, you know, some at least some greater than zero R value. So yeah, these are the challenges I find. Thank you, thank you for listening. Okay, very good. Yeah, we were able to to follow. Uh, there, there, there are going to be some some question. In particular, Antonio mentioned, and also from my side, it was not very well understood. Understood. Uh, you have um, ten column as an output, and in particular, yeah. I think uh, yes. Can you can you rephrasing these or explaining to us? and mm -hmm. also maybe sharing again your scripting procedure. Okay. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. So your, so, yeah, your response variable, which one is? Uh, you mean the output? Yeah, the output. Y, the Y that you're trying mm -hmm. to regress or classify. Yeah, so this is a classification uh, model, right? So yeah, all these 10 variables are my Y's. So finally, uh, I want the module to, uh, if I give, for example, any of these you know, input predictors, the model should say like what kind of species are, is, is kind of growing in the... Okay, yeah. so you have zero one, correct? Yeah, for the first so, one, it's zero one, and the, for the second, it's like zero two. So I'm having like 
each category will have uh, one number, unique number. Okay, but which these are species, ten species. Yeah. Yeah, these are species, and in some cases, it's like mix mixture of species. There are more than one or two species. Okay, but you can consider. Okay, so we, which is the so in the categorical uh, modeling, mm -hmm. you have to come up with one column that is class one, class two, class three, class four, and so on. So, which one is your column with this number? So the the with correct Antonio you you need to class you need to 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 make one response the the y is one column is one response. Okay. Uh, initially, I had like that like I had one column where each uh, row would say like for example Acrocarpus and the second row would say Cedrina things like that but then it didn't work out because uh, yeah uh, deep learning expects everything in numbers so that's why i had like you know and then the next step was like to have one column which numbers like for example acrocarpus would be one and cedrilla would be two so something like that but then yeah it didn't work in that way as well there was some issue with the dimensions so that's why i've separated out the column so can you hear me yeah okay yeah so Hi. there are a few things right so First, what Pep was describing, uh, like you have to have one column that's the column that has the, your target, right? So, for example, it's true that you have 10 possible labels, which are mm -hmm. the ones that you're pointing out there, right? Mm -hmm. But you should have one column that's the one that you're trying to uh, approximate, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, so, the way how this is set up is, is not going to work. So okay. that was expected. And can you scroll down a little bit more to the part where you define the network? Yeah, there. Mm -hmm. OK. Nah, no, a little bit further, sorry. Output size 10. So this is correct, output size 10. Yeah, the output size as 10 is correct. Mm -hmm. Right. but. For example, uh, scroll down a little bit further. Further. Okay, so you're doing classification, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how are you gonna compute R square for something that has labels exactly? Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you can't use R square for something that's discontinuous, right? You have labels. So mm -hmm. th there was one metric that we could use, which is the one that we use for that class, like for the satellite image data set, remember? Oh, accuracy assessments. Bravo. Accuracy, Bravo. Yeah, exactly. So that's what you use for assessing the performance of a model that's trained for classification. Got it. OK. Yeah, my bad. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. Um, what else? You know, can can you move up a little bit? Mm -hmm. A little bit more. More. Okay. Yeah. So again, right? So like you're training your model for classification, right? Mm -hmm. We saw that mean square error, which is the criterion that you're using there, is meant for regression, correct? Oh, okay. So okay. yeah, also the, the loss function is not appropriate for the task that we're trying to solve there. So which okay. one you should be using? Mm -hmm. Is it again related well, to the, the cross entropy, right? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, you remember why cross entropy is better? Mm, no idea. Sorry. Yeah, because cross, cross entropy is between two distributions, right? So you have your distribution that's the target which has basically like 100% or one for the correct class. And then you have a probability distribution over the classes, the possible mm -hmm. classes, all the 10 classes in your case. Okay. So like if the two distributions are, are different, then you know that you have some work to do like with respect to, to optimize your model, right? Mm -hmm. So like, that's why you, you need cross entropy. So there is no mean square error between distributions, but okay. it's like between values. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, that makes sense, yeah. 
Yeah, and, and I think that was base grade. Okay. Okay, yeah. And you mentioned okay. uh, there should be one target column, right? So that's not necessary. It's, it has to do with the function, loss function. And... Yes, it should be okay. one value, one value, uh, one column mm -hmm. that summarize. Uh, so in this case, you know, this one can be one, and you put one here. Then mm -hmm. species number, for example, here you have two. And then here you have again one, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, so in that one is going to be your categorical variable that you are trying to predict in terms of probability. Okay. Okay. So uh, so try to uh, to adjust these these um, this part in the in the Jupyter notebook and mm -hmm. rerun the code. So in particular, again, one column as a predictor, as a categorical. Mm -hmm. Then the accuracy as a matrix accuracy and not as a R. Mm -hmm. and then the root mean square error, not as a root mean square error, but as a uh, cross entropy. Okay, yeah. this three point. Okay, okay. and yeah. then you, you send me again on, on Monday, okay? Sure, yeah. Okay, very good. Yeah, thanks to Sophie and Andrew.